Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. It's none other than your host, Pastor Jay, coming to you live from Houston, Texas. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Amen. Oh, just praising God, amen, for another opportunity, amen, to just share with you, amen, an inspirational word, word of encouragement, if you will, and to brighten your day, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm sorry to show off with with uh, a little bit from Q Stone saying, uh, bless them right here on my house. See, many times we worry about things that we don't have and don't realize how much that we already have. There's many people out there that's just fortunate than you. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Come on. Some folks got more than a little bit. Some folks got less than nothing. Come on. Some folks got to work a lot of overtime just so they can get their kids something for real dope. Living check to check. Just one paycheck for being broke. being broke. And don't let nothing happen like your car break down. On top of what you already owe, we all been there. Some still there. It don't matter where you at, man. God don't care. I know things might look bad for you, but there's a whole lot of people doing worse than you. You might not think you got a whole lot, but when you give what you can, that's a whole lot. And that's the word for you. Wanna be a godly liver, then you gotta be a godly giver. So go and bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. It don't matter what you got. Just put it in a pot and watch God do a whole lot. Come on. Bless somebody. Don't bless somebody. Bless somebody. It don't matter what you got. Just throw it in a pot and watch God do a whole lot. Come on. And I ain't just talking about money, Jack. I'm talking about love where your heart at. Put some time to the side, you can give back. God gave you a gift, you can use that. Go ahead and give a dollar to the homeless. A lot of people on the streets really hungry. Or you can just pray for your home. This year, everybody get a bonus. Just bless somebody. Just help somebody. Go on, bless somebody. Go on, help somebody. It don't matter how you do it. You ain't even got to tell nobody. Get your mind off material things and start thinking about a spiritual change. And that's the word for you. If you're going to be a godly liver, then you got to be a godly giver. So go and bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. It don't matter what you got. Just put it in the pot and watch God do a whole lot. Come on. Bless somebody. Go bless somebody. Bless somebody. It don't matter what you got. Just throw it in the pot and watch God do a whole lot. Come on. Kiko, 
God was too cool to bless you, too proud to claim you, and too tired to save you. Wouldn't that be painful? Now take into account how you make God feel when you go to church and sit down when you should stand. All because your flesh is heavenly seasoned, but your spirit is so bland. Too shy to lift up your hands, and the only time you open up your mouth is when the pastor say, let the church say amen. See, something God can't stand is when you're too proud to take a stand and send up a praise when he has sent down his blessings with his hands, waiting, holding more, manifesting, yet you're slowly blocking your blessings with your silent praise. Sitting in church thinking to yourself, God is good. Saying to yourself, I know he can hear me. Surely he can, but he wants to see your praise more vivid, more clearly. For some reason, you can't even scream, thank you, Jesus, or even shout hallelujah. How about when you make it to those pearly gates and say, hey, Father God, remember me? And his response is, I never knew you. Ouch. Hurts, doesn't it? All God wants you to do is serve, live life abundantly, and keep his covenant. Forever praise his name, yet you do neither because you're too ashamed, and that's a shame. See, you ain't too proud to beg, but you're too proud to praise. You can ask God for everything, but you can't do something simple as give praise to his name. Even after he woke you up this morning and started you on your way, though you had a heavenly mission at hand, you ran and decided to do evil things with your day, and he still didn't take your life away, and you still have a silent praise. See, you seem to miss the true glory of God because of the haze displayed in your eyes. That's the reason why your praise remains inside so disguised. Blessed and highly unappreciative, the precursor to your spiritual demise. Legs almost sleep because you've been in your seat so long and now the pastor has arrived. And he says, let the church say amen. And that's when you speak. Then he says, everyone stand to your feet, find your Bibles and grab it. Turn to Psalms 34 verse 1 and say amen when you have it. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Now your silent praise has been put to shame because you've done nothing that these very words speak about. Sitting there all saved and super silent. I bet if Ludacris, Lil Wayne, or Jay-Z was in the pulpit, even God himself would have trouble keeping you quiet. Probably be somewhere front and center, standing on a chair, waving your hands in the air like you just don't care. Now what if God decided to stop handing you down blessings? I bet you would be quick to call upon his name and lift your hands up in despair. Now that's a reality check for you, but no one to stand up and give God his praise. That's all he wants you to do. That's all he wants you to do. It's so easy. Just worship him in spirit and in truth and show him that you appreciate everything he has done for you, O silent praiser. Now, bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in your mouth. Now, bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in your mouth. And no, this is not to condemn anyone because I'm that silent praiser that I speak about. And if you are a silent praiser, if you just love the Lord at the end of this poem, don't just clap. Get out of your seats and shout. Victory in Jesus. Exalt him among the nations.
Welcome, welcome, welcome to Gospel Soul with none other than your host, Apostle Jake. So you live from Houston, Texas, to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Amen. Glory to God. I love, amen, to praise his holy name. I want to encourage your spirit today. I want you to know, amen, that only what you do for Christ will last. And if you are diligently working in the kingdom, praise God, whatever it is you're going through, this too shall pass, praise God. I want to get into your weather now, let you know what's going on in Houston. We're getting ready for a freeze. Everybody is trying to get prepared. Amen. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, praise God, amen, uh, but... I'm trusting God, amen, regardless of how it goes, how it seems, what it looks like, and those that are scared, hallelujah, I know that God, amen, is going to work it out, hallelujah, for my good, hallelujah, just, just keep your mind stayed on him, make sure that you take the next precautions, praise God, if they tell you, you go stock up from the store, go ahead and do what you need to do, all right, it's Friday, amen, it's already in the afternoon, amen, the north north winds, 25 miles per hour with gusts up to 45, which we are experiencing that, amen, I stepped outside and uh, I'm glad I didn't have a wig on today, <laughs> it would be gone, <laughs> amen, Laughter makes the heart grow fonder. For Friday night is clear. Widespread frost after midnight. Catch that, y'all. Much with lows in the mid-30s. Northwest winds 5 to 10 miles per hour with gusts up to 20 miles per hour. Becoming south after midnight. And Saturday, <laughs> again, widespread frost in the morning. Sunny, highs in the mid 60s, south winds 5 to 10 miles per hour with gusts up to 20 miles per hour. And for Saturday night, most clear lows in the mid 30s, south winds 5 to 10 miles per hour becoming north with gusts up to 20 miles per hour after midnight. And for your Sunday, get your mind on Jesus. <laughs> Partly sunny, much cooler with highs in the mid-40s. Northeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And for Sunday night, mostly cloudy, cold with lows around 30. Ooh, it's cold outside, amen? Come on, put them put them boots on, <laughs> that jacket on, put that sweater on. I promise you, you need to get ready for what's about to happen. Again, you're listening to My Gospel Soul, where we're breaking the yoke of bondage through the power of the Word of God. This next song I'm going to play, by, uh, play for you is by your very own, me. <laughs> it says, Jesus is the joy to me, all right? Come on, give me some praise.
Amen. Welcome back. Welcome back. Praise God. Amen. I love that song. I mean, made it, recorded it years ago. Amen. My brother produced it at Feel Good Music. And um, my friend is on there, Shannon. <clears throat> Shannon. Shannon passed away a year ago, about a year ago. And I miss him. Amen. When I say he was a songboard, a songbird, praise God, he could sing. Do you hear me? I used to love to hear him sing, wonderful, God, he's so wonderful. And when I say he sung it, amen, he sung it, amen. Welcome to the show, Pastor Isaac. How you doing today? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm blessed, 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 amen. Getting ready to, well, I want to, I want to introduce a book right quick, um, um, my friend Craig Wise Man Cade, Amen. I remember when I first started this show, uh, Wise Man came on the show and he prophesied that this show, praise God, Amen, would um, its listener base would skyrocket, and it did in a matter of a week. Praise God, the show just took off. Praise God. So he has a book. He has a couple of books, but the one book in particular that uh I'm starting to read this um this coming week is called Poverty is not your friend praise god amen um Craig Wiseman Kate is on a divine mission to free others from the grip of poverty he is an author pastor writer international speaker and host of the online web series Your Renewed Mind so he handed me his book. He gave me three books. And um, this one, Poverty is Not Your Friend, is like, is my favorite. Praise God. And I was working so much, I didn't have time to like, to like get into it like I really wanted to. But now I have the time. Praise God. So this coming week, I'm going to be reading through it. And I, I want to just read a couple of the topics that he has in here. And he's using uh, the book of Proverbs uh, in this book, praise God, because, you know, Proverbs that it speaks on wisdom and it speaks on foolishness, praise God. And so I'm excited about uh, what this book, amen, is going to do for my life, amen, for my spirit, man. Can you hear me good, Pastor? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Uh, so just a couple of the topics he has in here is Rich hand, um, rich hand, poor hand. Uh, construction versus destruction. Stop being stingy, and I'm pretty sure he's talking about learning how to sew. Amen. Riches can't be trusted. Troubling your house. I mean, it's a lazy bones, slug life, and I know that's about being a slugger. So I, I, I know where he's coming from with that. But he has a lot of awesome. Um, topics in here and it's all word based praise god and uh so i'm in this next week praise god i'm going to be having different subjects i'm gonna be reading different subjects from his book praise god and blessing you amen because let me tell y'all something i love when people give me material to share through the show Amen. And y'all know I love to preach. <laughs> Amen. But I also love to teach. I love to put it in a way where you can take that word, you can you can sit down at home and you can divide it up. Amen. And you can you can get that word Amen. in your spirit for yourself. Amen. The Bible says study to show thyself approval. Workmen that need is not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> Glory to God. So Amen. So, Pastor Lord, tell me how you how is your day going? How was the prayer line today? I didn't get to be on. Oh yes, ma'am. It was blessed. Uh, we the ladies got on there and we prayed and we got into our word a little bit and we went ahead and got off. But uh, it, it's been a blessing interceding mm-hmm. on the behalf of others and ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I want to add some people to the prayer line. I got to add my add my sister, Sister Alicia, to the prayer line. Praise God. Amen. She has to see a heart doctor. Amen. They said they found a blockage. Praise God. Amen. 
So um, pray with her and then the friend that took her to the hospital, he's in there and they have, they said he's, they're diagnosing him pre-diabetic. Amen. He has a sore on his foot. So I want to add him and also praise God. I'm continuing in prayer for Sister Doretha, praise God, amen. She said they made the funeral plans, praise God, and not finalized yet, amen. But uh, keep her in our prayers, amen. I can't tell her that I understand where she is right now because I've never lost a child, amen. So I, I uh, my heart is with her. My prayers are with her because it's, it's devastating. It's devastating, amen. I've... I've um, I know people who have who have been through this, Amen. But I can't say I personally went through it, so I can't say I understand. So that's where we apply, Amen. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus, prayer, love, understanding, amen. uh, and and we gotta learn how to be there for one another, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Technology has set us up, Pastor, to to be able to text, video call. <laughs> Even if you not, you know, I'm not in the same state with you. I I, I can call any kind of way. Praise God and connection. They can help you the whole time. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Oh, so, Pastor, what's in your spirit today? You know. I, I believe, let me tell y'all something, why I always do pastors like that, because um, pastor, prophetic anointing on his life, it's, it's a powerful anointing, amen, and I always believe, amen, that God gives, amen, his prophets, amen, a word, amen, um, I believe that pastor is fivefold, praise God, amen, he has every gift, amen, to teach, Amen. He's never heard me say this before, but I know. <laughs> to teach, amen, evangelize, all of it. Praise God. And I, I love uh, the anointing that's on his life. That's why anytime he's on there, I'm going to say, Pastor, what you got? What what God gives you <laughs> for us today? Amen. Amen. I just want to, uh, first of all, say to God be the glory. Uh, I often heard, used to hear a lot of people say that you know the glory, but you don't know the story. And Mm -hmm. I have been through some things, and God had to whoop me a little while and chase me to the place that he wanted me to be. But I thank God that I'm a willing vessel now to be used by a humble willing vessel to be used by him. But I just want to encourage everybody today that to let you know this winter weather is about to come. We're about to have rains, and we're about to have Arctic air coming through and I just want to uh, uh, encourage everyone that Psalms 121 he says that and uh, Pastor Denise if you'll get that uh, Psalms 21 he said that he'll preserve us that he will protect us the moon won't be able to hurt us the sun won't be able to hurt us and, 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 and whatever comes our way he will watch us over us in the heat the Bible says in uh, Psalms twenty one that he slumbers pastor. nor do he sleep. He looks Amen. after us when we go when we sleep, when we don't know when hurt, harm or danger is around us. He's there watching over us and all we have to do it's called on the name of Jesus. The Bible said that he has sent his angels around on our behalf. So if we call on the name of Jesus, he'll send those those host of angels or the camp Amen. over us. So I encourage everybody in this winter weather season to be alert, be prepared, do what needs to be done. God is doing his business, but God wants us to be protected. So I encourage everyone to Get your flashlights, your heaters, your water, your bread, whatever you need to do to keep warm in this season. Amen. 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 And the most important... Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. The most important thing to do is that we don't know, and I say this over and over, and I never not get on here and not say this, we don't know the day or the hour that our number will be called. So I'll repent quickly for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We need to have a repentant heart because we don't know. 
we don't know when God is calling our number. Amen. 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 And that's that's the truth. Praise God. Amen. And we got to preach it and tell it everywhere that we go. Amen. You know not the day nor the hour. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I was watching, amen, a series. And my sister called and said, you need to watch this. You need to watch. So I was so watching a series where people were um, disappearing. Husband disappeared. The baby mm. disappeared. The, the, uh, and the cars wrecked and because people were just disappearing out of places. Praise God. It was called Left. I think. The leftovers. That's what it was called. Uh-huh. And, then, and, and and people was just disappearing. It reminded me of of Left Behind. That that uh that movie that came out a long long time ago. They showed it to us children. Praise God. Amen. And it was amen. to compel. And a lot of people don't understand compel. Amen. In some uh in in some uh definitions means to threaten. Amen. Or uh, yeah, make yeah. a person. Uh, uh, feel uncomfortable, Amen. Hallelujah. You need to feel uncomfortable if you, if your life is set up in sin. You ought to feel uncomfortable when the word of God come forth and you find out, Amen, that you are headed for a burning hell. And a lot of times we don't want to hear that. Praise God. We don't want to hear that that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. But it's the truth, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that, that, that applies to me, praise God, and everybody else. I always say from front door Amen. to front door and, and in the parking lot. Hallelujah. That's it. And some of us live a life like we're exempt, praise God. But you're responsible for what you know. Hallelujah. You're responsible for what you know. He did send shepherds, praise God, amen, and to help you navigate, amen, or to to be there for support, amen. praise God. But he holds us accountable individually, amen. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. And, and the thing that the Bible says that he that does not have the doctrine, the word, the doctrine mm-hmm. of Christ, has not Christ, but the God of this world has blinded their mind. The enemy has set up in our minds. So, uh, it's a thing called, and I'm probably not pronouncing it right, antagonist or whatever. Where it's where you don't believe, but you do believe. You're in the middle. You don't believe that it's a God, but you don't believe that it's not a God. And and mm-hmm. we done woke up. Everybody done woke up and, and listen that the God of this world has blinded their mind. The Bible says that he is the Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can enter to the Father unless through the Son. And you cannot go no other way. The Bible says the, the the way is straight. You cannot go no other way but through Christ. And if you foolish enough to believe that you don't have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you believe that God is not a, a God that will put you in hell, you sadly mistaken. Because the situ- the the Bible says that all these, and we went in Galatians 5 the other day, and it gave a list of different sins. If you commit those sins and you don't have a repentant heart, your home is in hell. Mm. I, I didn't say it. The Word the of word God says it. it. The word says it. So, therefore, no. The Bible says no condemnation in Christ Jesus. He did get on the cross for our past, present, and future sins. But we have a choice where we make our eternal home. If the Bible says they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, I encourage you. I, I, I encourage you to call on the name of the Lord while he hears you. Man. Come on, hallelujah. While he's there. Because it's going to be a day and a time where God, his judgment will be on the land. We going, mm-hmm. it, it reminds me, and, and I don't know this, but God just put this, it reminds me of when Joseph uh, uh, got put in the pit. And, mm-hmm. and it was a purpose for him being put in the pit. But mm-hmm. in the pit, he was able to get into the palace, and he was able to to tell about the famine. And it's a famine that's coming in the land. 
It's a family that's going. God said, prepare for what's about to happen. God said again in Psalms 20, 121 that he will protect and preserve his people. But you have to be a part of his a priesthood. You have to be his child. You have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. God will sustain you even in your famine, but you have to call on the name of the Lord. See, the part, you can't go into a job and expect a 401k if you don't clock in. You have to you have to clock in to receive the blessings and the benefits of God. You have to call on the name of the Lord in order to receive the blessings and the benefits of God. So I don't know who that's for, but I promise you the uh, God is sending a famine in the land. And what I mean, a dry place in your life. He's giving you time to store up to store up, to pray, to read your word, to store up some things because God will sustain you in your dry situation. But you got to call on the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jackson. Amen. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Yes, now I can. All right, amen. We are in that time, amen. Like he said, store up. We are in that time, praise God. Like like in the physical realm, we're in that time where people are headed to the grocery store, headed, you know, trying to get water, trying to make sure to prepare. That same energy needs to be applied to, to right now spiritually, amen. Hallelujah. That's Getting it. that word. Getting that, you know, uh, getting as much, uh, amen, uh, prayer as you can. Hallelujah, storing up. Hallelujah, as much can. You know, when I was a kid, we used at the church we used to go to, we had to memorize scriptures and stuff. You know, we had to. Um, and when we got to church by Friday night, from Sunday to that Friday night, I mean from Friday, I'm sorry, we we would tell how many Bible verses we read. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many Amen. chapters we read. Amen. And the pastor would reward those that that. You know, whoever read the most, praise God, amen. And at first, you know, it just seemed like it was a competition, praise God. But by the time, by when months and months passed, somebody could say something to you and that word, you, come on, you regurgitate the word. Come on, hallelujah. You can amen. sing that, praise amen. God. And, 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 and the pastor be reading and you can quote, you can memorize. You know, you, you I mean, you had memorized that word. It's it's amazing, praise God, when you just sit down. And and I, like I tell people, you sit two hours in front of the TV. Come on. Just sitting there. Hmm. Two hours. Glory to God. Amen. You got two. You spend Amen. two hours. Amen. You spend 30 minutes on the phone. Come on. Amen. You Amen. when you at the doctor, you know you, you when you at the doctor's office, how long it takes him to call you back there? You got time to read the word. And then what's so awesome Amen. about technology now, you you can you can just put your earphones on and just let it read to you. Come on, just let Amen. It read. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 That reminds me of back in the day when we were kids. It was a a, a movie, a story about the ant and the grasshopper. When the grasshopper, he was doing everything, parting and laying back, and he wasn't worried about it, just going on about everyday life. And yet he was looking and laughing at the ants because they was busy going, hearing that collecting food because they knew that winter was about to come. They knew that it was going to be a dry season in their life, so they were busy working to store up. And that's where we we sitting back so much. We not looking at the signs of the times. We not looking at what's going around us. We are not trying to get out there and compel men and women to Christ. We not trying to look after our fellow brother or sister. We not storing. We not in our word. We are not fasting. We are not praying because we just going through everyday life like it's not going to be a storm in our life. But we we need to take an example of the hand. We need to be on our face before God. We need to be preaching. We need to be praying and doing whatever the Lord. We need to be in our word. We need to be right divided because the winter is coming. It's going to be coming. a dry place. 
place in our life. And I tell you, like uh, we read on the other day, when Jesus commanded uh, uh, Moses and them to tap into the rock, he will sustain you in whatever situation in your life. Until he bless you, but it's the thing that you have to store up. It's like it's a song by I think uh, 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 Pastor Jess William Murphy, I believe. It's a mm-hmm. seed in the ground. You yes. have some seed. You have to plant some seeds in the ground. And when you put those seeds in the ground, when something comes up in your life, you can remind God. That's what I planted right there. Mm, I need it to produce. I put Yay. that there. I need you to grow it. I put that there. I need something from you right yes, now. Lord. Do you have some seeds in the ground today that you can go to the Father and say, Lord, this might be going on in my life, but I need mm. you to produce. Lord, I need a healing to produce right now. The Bible mm. says he gives seed to the sower. Lord. What are we sowing in this season to, to yes, reap? Amen. Mm. Mm-hmm. Amen. That was powerful. What are we sowing? Uh, Oh, that is a powerful song. Put the seed in the ground. My God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you for this word on today. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. My prayers are that those listening, amen, can see what you are saying to the body of Christ on today. Amen. And, And Lord, help us, Father God, to learn how to be faithful. Lord, help us, Father God, to keep our word. Lord, we tell you, Father God, we're going to read more. We're going to pray more. Amen. And as soon Amen. as the people come on, we, we distract it. Lord, please take away all our distractions. Father God, teach us discipline. Amen. That we will pray without ceasing. That we will have a consistent man, prayer life, a consistent study life. Amen. Hallelujah. Consistent. Amen. Relationship with you. And Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. You said, Father God, amen, that it's our reasonable service to present our bodies as sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. Lord, we pray for holiness to glory to God. Not just to be in relationship, but holiness, glory to God. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for it in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. I mean, even in the past couple of uh Weeks things are changing in my life, praise God, amen. Uh, and I'm talking about spiritually, praise God. We always want God to manifest a blessing, amen. But when God begins to grow you spiritually or restore you spiritually, that's reason to rejoice, praise God, amen. That's reason amen. to rejoice, praise God. Because, uh, when I first, uh, Walked away. Well, when the situation started happening with me, with the uh, job I was on, I had an attitude. Man, go! I had an attitude. I was like, Lord, I gotta. <laughs> I was like, Lord, mm-hmm. I gotta take care of your house. You know, I can't lose my job. You know, I gotta. Uh, I gotta. You know, pay the rent, and I gotta take care of your pe. You know, and the Lord say, I don't wanna. Do. <laughs> Amen. And uh, all my little whining and complaining, and then he say, "This about me. How you gonna tell me how to bless you? How you gonna tell me how to, you know, you know?" <laughs> so I had to, I had to get in my word and build my strength. Cause sometimes our trials show us where we are with him. Come on, it'll show us that we, need, it'll show us that we need a little more faith. It'll show us. Praise God, where we are. And that's not a bad thing. Amen. When your trial and your test come, it shows you where you are. And when you are able to identify where you are weak, come on, hallelujah. Then you Amen. Know, you know, okay, God, build me up, build my strength up. Some of us are weak in, our, in the area of patience. Come on. And I remember Amen. when when I first gave my, uh, well, it wasn't when I first gave my life to Christ, but I was, um, I was living in the Star Hope Shelter. Huh. Ain't that a testimony for mm. a pastor? I was living in Star Hope Shelter with my children. And I was in the metal beds in that place. My God, y'all, we pray they, they get better beds. But <laughs> the kids were sleeping. 
and I was up because it's a little light that would that was outside that would shine through that little window, and I and uh I asked the Lord for patience, right? Watch this, y'all need y'all to get what what get this part right here, and I started going through. <laughs> I asked mm. God for patience, and I started going through. I started suffering. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Look, it didn't get it didn't come in the envelope. Patience didn't come in the envelope in, in my mailbox. Mm. It didn't come in a package from Amazon. FedEx didn't send it in. Come on. Amen. Mm. Didn't nobody come uh to my front door and say, Here's your patience. It didn't happen like that. I started suffering. Amen. I started going through. Stuff started come on, I lost my place to live. I lost you know, come on, amen. I learned patience. I was standing in line at a soup kitchen, people of God. <laughs> Cause I know we want a we want the glamorous Christian life. We want the glam. We want Amen. everything to be peachy. Amen. But God has to take us through, make us strong. Come on. Amen. Amen. You don't want to suffer through anything. Praise God. And I and I thank God for the saints of old, uh, Pastor. I don't know if you remember this song, but it the song says. Uh, uh, Lord, don't move my mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. Hey, yes, ma'am. Lord, yes, ma'am. Don't take away my stumbling blocks. Believe me, all what I'm saying was, Amen. Lord, I know you can move it, but Amen. Lord, I also know you, Amen. you can teach me how to climb it. Amen. Block. I know you can you can move my temptation, but Lord, I also know that you can give me the strength to resist it. You can you can deliver me. Oh I, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Amen. 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 I get that in there. Amen. Minute. With God, <laughs> us through our go through. He teaches us through, and watch this. And he keeps us while he teaches us. Mm. That's it. Amen. You want to say something? That's else? it. Mm. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless God. Amen. You know, sometimes, amen, uh, sometimes it get tough, praise God. Sometimes it's, it get difficult. Amen. But you got to learn how to trust him. Amen. And I know when I ask God for that, praise God, and we ask God for that, we want God to do it the way we want him to do it. He's not going to, his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. He's not going to do it. Amen. The way you want it done. Come on. Hallelujah. I heard people say, God, God got to look, God took the whole marriage, <laughs> took the whole house, took the car, mm. took the this, took the, come on, took, come on, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard a young lady say, she and, asked, uh, I heard a parent say she asked God to save her son. God, and he went, and her son went to jail. But when he came out, he was mm. teaching the gospel. I, I heard Amen. one woman say, she say, uh, her son, he, he saw her coming to church, but he was in a wheelchair. She said she was so mad at God because she told God to save her son, and her son was coming in a wheelchair. I said, you can't tell God how to do things. You can't tell That's God it. how to do things. And I'm not saying that God put him in a wheelchair. I'm saying that God allowed him to go through some things. Come on. Why didn't That's you look? But he's serving God. He praising God. He lifted. Come on. And a lot of us say, wow, yes, how would you say that? No, God got a way of doing things. God That's got it. a way of doing things. Mm-hmm. That's it. Glory to your name. Amen. I, I know the Bible said many the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. Many. Yes. We we yes. go through things and we go through trials and tribulations. And a lot of times that, you know, the Bible does say that we have the power to tell the mountain be there, removing it had to. But a lot, God, well, even in that, we got to go through some things in this walk. Jesus yes. had to go through some things. He had to care. He had to go from just to just mall. He carried a cross that it was too heavy for him to bear in his weakness. But in your weakness, God will send assignment to help you carry your cross. He will Jesus. send those and, and and then not only that, well he but but God will he 
bring us through things to teach us patience. He allow us to go through it, but I guarantee in our go throughs, God will strengthen us. He will never. The Bible say that He will preserve us. He will mm. keep us. We will. It's not everything is not a point of uh, 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 to death. Everything is not uh, the devil doing. A lot of things God wants to rebuild us. He wants to reshape us so He can get the glory out of our life. Come on now. Hallelujah. Come Amen. on now. Amen. He wants Amen. All and yes, Pastor, I'm younger, but I do remember that song. Give us the strength <laughs> to climb. Yeah. You know, a lot of times that we have some mountains in our lives that we can speak all day long, but God placed them in there because he wants us to be strengthened. He wants to learn how to lean and depend on him, to trust his word, to you know, exercise the faith that God has given us. Look mm-hmm. at me, eight years, eight years, and 40 years old, I've been on dialysis. Eight years, and it gets hard, but it teaches me to trust and depend on God. As I sit in that dialysis room, and I see people every day, a chair getting empty because somebody passes away that I know. But I thank God that I am still here. Yeah, and the hallelujah. reason that I'm still here, because God has purpose on my life. It, it's like, oh, who was it that said it was a thorn in their side? God was Will place uh-huh. something in your side to allow you to lean and depend on him, allow him to trust in him, to let him know that you're not like the old folks you said, that you're not too big for your britches. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. And, and and I thank God because every day that I give up, and I, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I get up and I go to that place and I get on that machine, I thank God because every day I look at a seat and see somebody not here and God has spared me. But now I have a closer relationship, not because of so much that I went through or going through, is that I learn I don't depend on that machine to pump my blood. I depend on God that created that machine to keep me here. My faith in God is a lot stronger because I know that God said that that I shall live and not die. And Amen. I just declare the works of the Lord. Works of the Lord. That with long Amen. life God will satisfy me. And I yes. stand on that word and that's why I am still here. This is a faith walk, y'all. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. I see that machine pumping, but I look past that machine and see that God is restoring my body. In Come Jesus on. Name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so caught up. Amen. The time passed. Praise God. Amen. We got six minutes left. Praise God. In the past. Amen. I just want to. Amen. Extend. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The invitation of salvation. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're listening to the show on today, praise God. And something was said, praise God. Amen. That's tugging on your spirit, telling you it's time. Today is your day. Amen. That you give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. Right now in your living room where you sit, stand, or lay, amen, you can lift your hands to heaven, praise God. And you can say, Jesus, hallelujah, forgive me for my sins, praise God, amen. Hallelujah, you can confess, praise God. A sinner, amen, hallelujah. And you want the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, amen, as your Lord and your Savior, hallelujah. That you believe that he died on the cross for your sins, that you may have the right to the tree of life. He rose on the third day as a representation of the old man dying and the new man rising up. Hallelujah. And that you believe this, praise God, that he did it for you, praise God, amen. And that you, amen, want to walk this path, want to pick up your cross and follow him. Hallelujah. Right now, you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, I want to pray over you. Praise God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that person, amen. Hallelujah. That received you through this broadcast. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask, Father God, that you put a hedge of protection around them. Praise God. That all old things, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Will not come now. Their dwelling, praise God. Will not come in that house. Praise God. Amen. We bind up our 
all residue, all backlash from the enemy. Yes, Praise Lord. God. Amen. And Lord, we pray that you lead them to a church. Amen. That's preaching the full gospel yes, of God. Jesus Christ, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And Lord, we thank you for yes, it right Lord. now. Glory to God. Lord, thank we know you, Lord. that you are faithful, God. Hallelujah. And awesome ruler. Amen. And that this child, yes, amen, hallelujah, that has humbled themselves under your mighty hand, glory to God, that you will come yes, in the household, Lord. God, and purify that house, glory to God, give them the courage to pray yes, out loud, Lord. amen, to decree and declare, yes, amen, their salvation in the mighty name of Jesus, and Lord, we cut off every path back their old ways, hallelujah, yes, every Lord, path, God. glory to God, every demon, every spirit, yes, glory God. to God, every soul tie every spirit of succubus that have attached themselves to this person we bind it up right now in the yes, mighty God, name in of the Jesus. name they of will Jesus. no longer glory to god walk a path of sin glory to god even though we all have seen yes, the father of the glory of god they have helped hallelujah and that is the holy ghost hallelujah we thank you for yes, it right god. now in your thank son you, jesus name. Amen. In Jesus, name. In Jesus Amen. name. Amen. You are in the Houston area and you need a church home. Praise God. We ask you to join us at Out the Box Ministries uh, Life Impact Center. Praise God. Uh, we're also the Eagles. Amen. Are there as well at 8389 Almeda Road. Uh, Sweet H2. Praise God. Houston, Texas 77054. Forward to seeing you in the house of God at 4 p.m. Yes, yes, an evening service. Remind me of old school church. They had a 7 o'clock service. We had 4 o'clock, praise God. Waiting on you, amen. Come on in. Praise the Lord, amen, with us. Amen. We look forward to seeing you. We want to greet you, amen, with love, amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Big old hug. Praise God. Amen. And then want to teach you. Amen. amen. And equip you. Amen. With the word of God. Hallelujah. Pastor, do you have any closing remarks? Amen. I just again to encourage you to repent. Repent today. You might feel like that I have strayed too far out. I have, I'm, I'm doing too much that God doesn't hear me. But God hears us all when we call on the name of Jesus. And it's easy, Pastor Jack, to just uh, call it the the Lord's Prayer, the, uh, not the Lord's Prayer, but the Salvation Prayer to you. And all you have to do is confess with your heart and believe with your mouth that Jesus was risen. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, I'm sorry, that Jesus was risen from the dead and that he got up with all power. The Bible says you say, I don't care. You talking to somebody that's done been through, and this is a, the one that say he was saved, done been through every situation in life, done been through every sin in life. But I know that there is a God that one day I got tired of being in my situation and I had my come to Jesus meeting on the floor of a hotel room and 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 my thing was I was sick and tired of being in my situation and God I called on the name of the Lord and ever since then I have been moving forward and I'm not perfect but I'm striving for God's perfection through his word so I encourage you, it's nothing too hard. We don't have to worry about cleaning ourselves, but God will clean us up. Amen. Amen. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Uh, the only thing you need to do is come on. Hallelujah. He will clean. All you got to do is, what did you say, Pastor? Surrender. Hallelujah. I That's it. surrender all. Hallelujah. We love you. We want you to know, praise God, that without faith it's impossible to please God, but with God all things are possible. Who cares? God cares. God bless you, and we'll talk to you on Monday. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and bundle up. Amen.